Hi, my name is Alex from APC Dynamics, and in this video, I'm going to go over inventory management for Dynamics 365 Business Central. First, I'll go over the important fields in the item card. Then I'll talk about how to make simple item adjustments to adjust inventory in and out of your inventory. Next, I'll cover the physical inventory orders where you can do periodic physical inventory counts. Lastly, I'll talk about transferring items from one location to another. Let's get to it. To create a new item, click on items from your menu or use the magnifying glass and bring up the items. Before you create a new item, make sure you use this magnifying glass to search for the item that you intend to create. If there is one, obviously don't create it. If the item doesn't exist and you want and you still want to create this item in the system, click on new and this will give you a blank item card. There's a lot of fields on the item card. I'm only going to be focusing on the important fields that you need to fill in in order to transact for this item. On the number, give it an item number, give it a description. The type, make sure you leave it as inventory. The base unit measure you want to define the lowest denomination of this item that you keep in the warehouse. If I scroll down, there are three fields in the costing and posting fast tab. That's the general product posting group. Make sure this is filled in. Tax group code. If this item is a taxable item, make sure you select the proper tax group code. If it's not taxable, make sure you select non-taxable. Inventory posting group. Make sure this is filled in as well. Don't worry about the unit cost. The unit cost will be populated when we positive adjust inventory into this item. Make sure you set a unit price. Even if you have special pricing that you're going to be setting up for this item, always have a unit price on the item card so you don't accidentally sell this item at zero price. Keep scrolling down. If you already have a reorder point defined for this item, set it as reorder, fixed reorder quantity. If you don't, if this is a brand new item, set it as lot for lot. Defining a reorder policy allows the planning engine to, to make suggested orders if the item is low on quantity. The last important field is the item tracking code. If your item is lot tracked or serial number tracked, make sure you pick the proper code for this item. If you do not pick a code and you transact on this item, you will not be able to add the serial number afterwards. Okay, and that's the item card. You could close out of this. And if I click on binocular, you could search for this item again. Now let's talk about adjusting inventory into the item that we just created. How you're gonna do that is you go to the item journals and pick a batch. When you go into the item journal, so the first field you want to pay attention to is the posing date. This is the date you want to make the adjustment. The entry type, it's always going to be a positive adjustment or a negative adjustment. In our case, I'm going to do a positive adjustment. And the item number would be the item that we want to do the adjustment for. Location code, make sure you fill in the location that you want to positive adjust the inventory to. And the quantity is the quantity that we want to make the adjustment. Now the unit amount is the unit cost for this item. You do not fill in the unit cost field. You always fill in the unit amount field. So this is gonna be 1250. Now to do a negative adjustment, just go to a new line. And on the entry type, make sure it's a negative adjustment. Choose my item, select the location, type in the quantity that you want to adjust. You do not need to enter a negative quantity here because the system already knows that we're going to take inventory out of the system because it's specified as a negative adjustment. You don't need to update the unit amount for negative adjustments because costing will be taken out according to the costing method set up on the item card. Now, if you're doing a positive or negative adjustment for a lot or serial controlled item, so for example, I'm going to adjust some pork in my blue location. Oop, make sure this is a positive adjustment just 50 pounds in here. I need to enter the lot number that I'm going to positive adjust into the inventory. After I enter my line, I'm gonna click on related, line, and item tracking lines. I could see based on the item tracking code that this is lot controlled. On the lot number, I am going to fill in my lot number, type in the quantity for this particular lot, and go to a new line for the remainder of the lots. Click close. Now when you're ready, click on post and this will post the items into your inventory, total inventory quantity. Now to do a negative adjustment on a lot controlled item. So I'm going to bring back my pork, put in my location and negative just 25. To select the lot that I want to negative adjust out of the system, click on related lines and item tracking lines. 
from here I could choose the lot number that are in the system. So in this case, I'm going to take it out of lot one, two, three, four, five, six, and it'll default the total number of quantity for me. Click on close. If I post this, this will deduct 25 quantity from that particular lot from the pork item. All right, so we've gone over the item card. We've gone over using the item journal to make adjustments to our inventory. Now let's talk about the physical inventory order and using the transfer order in Business Central. To do a physical inventory count, you would go to the physical inventory orders. So let's bring that up and click on new to generate a new physical inventory order. Define the location code that you want to do the physical count for. So in this case, I'm going to choose blue. Next, I need to populate the lines. You could enter it manually or you could use calculate and calculate lines to populate the lines for me. In our case, I am going to use the item that I just created and a serialized item so we can demo the item tracking. Click OK. And this will populate the lines for it with the expected count for us. So let's say you have two different teams, one to count the non-serialized item and the other team to count the serialized items. So to generate a recording for each type of item, click on home, make new, make new recording and just filter on the item that you want to do the physical count for and click OK. Now I'm going to make another recording for the serialized item. So now there are two recordings for this physical inventory order. Click on related order recording. These are the two recordings I've created. If I click on the first one, this will be the item that I want my users to start counting for. From here, you could print the physical inventory recording for the user to do their count. So let's say they came back and they counted 45. When they're done with this, click on finish and this will mark this physical inventory recording as completed. Now for an item that you have item tracking defined, I'll place a check mark if you have an item tracking code defined for this item. So in this case, I am just count, gonna use the assist edit and choose the count for me. Have the user enter the inventory item. Now, if there are additional item that they count in here, they could just enter the additional line and type in the serial number that they found when they're doing their physical count. When they're done, click on finish. Once all of the recordings are have a status of finish, I am gonna go back to my physical inventory order. Now you could choose to generate additional counts, but in this case, I'm going to finish my inventory count. Yes. Now you'll notice it'll tell me that I'm going to be positive adjusting this serialized item and I'm going to be negative adjusting five items because I only counted 45. When you've confirmed the quantity, click on post and this will post the physical count in your system. The last thing I'll talk about is how to transfer an item from one location to another. To do that, you have to create a transfer order. Click on new. On the transfer from code, define the location that you want to transfer from. The transfer to code, this is the location that you want to transfer the item to. And the in transit code, you could define what is the location code for the in transit location. Make sure you define the proper posting date and on the item number is where you can enter your item number. So let's say I want to transfer 10 items. On the new line, let's enter an item where it's lot tracked. So I'm gonna enter move five pounds, click on item tracking lines. I'm gonna click on line item tracking lines and click on shipments and define the lot number that I am going to be shipping. So let's say I'm gonna ship from lot one, two, three, four, five, six, close. Once this order is ready to go and the items have been shipped, you will click on post and click on ship. This basically moves the quantity from the blue location into the in transit location. If I scroll to the right, you'll see that quantity shipped is now populated with the quantity that I've just shipped. When it gets to the east location, the final destination, you would change the quantity to receive if there's any discrepancies. If not, click on post and post receive. This will receive the inventory from the in transit location into the east location.